Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. Today I would like to share with you the completion of the Midnight Garden Quilt. It's all finished, it's beautiful, it's really soft and lovely, pieced back. And if you're interested, I'll show you how I finish this. So if you are new to my channel, this is the fourth episode in the making of this quilt. It's much bigger than the quilts I usually make and it did take me a little bit of time. So I made it in two blocks at a time. There were only six different sorts of blocks in this quilt and I did two a week and then the completion. So that brings us up to week four. And I design all of my own quilts and for the first time I thought I would approach the designing of this quilt in a different way. I don't know why, I just did. And what I did was start with the central block, I designed that, and then I made a block to go with that, and then I made another block to go with those, and so on. And it was quite an interesting way to work, I don't think I'll be doing it again very often because I did spend a lot of time just sitting looking at the design wall trying to think how I could make the next block and how it would fit and to bring all the elements of the blocks that had gone before into it. Whereas usually when I make a quilt and design a quilt I use graph paper and I sit and I do all of that in one go. And what I normally do is to work out the shapes of the blocks. So there's a unity there or a symbiotic relationship. So it all goes together lovely and then I add colour. So that's my usual way of working. And this time, because I was making the shapes and then the colour at the same time, I did make a few alterations to it, so I did have a few blocks left over. I did a little bit of unpicking and I did a lot of staring at a wall. <laughs> a very long time <laughs> staring at a wall. But anyway, I won't probably do it again. And also, when I start with a design that is fully complete on a piece of paper in front of me, I know the dimensions of the quilt. Well, this one, it just grew. It grew and grew and grew, a bit like Jack and the Beanstalk. And in the end, it finished at 76 inches. Well, usually I only work to about 60 inches. So it was quite a big quilt. And then when I'd pieced the top and I was thinking about layering it uh, to, ready to quilt, I did a little <laughs> aversion tactics. I did almost anything really to stop me starting that quilting process. So I tidied up all the pieces of the fabric that was left over from this quilt and processed all of those. And these are the pieces of fabric that are less than a fat quarter. So I'm going to work my way through those. So these are the part blocks I've got left over, not too many. So I'll store those away, ready for another quilt. And I've separated out the yellow, orange and green. And that's for my controlled improv quilt. And that's what I'm going to work on today is my controlled improv quilt. And I'll make a little video about that to show you how I'm working on that and to tell you why I need to control the improv. <laughs> if you've been quilting for quite a while, you might find improv quilting quite difficult. And I think, well, for me personally, there's a few reasons for that and I'll share that with you next week. So I've processed everything that was left over. Now I'm going to get back to the quilting. And when I did everything I could possibly do, to put off quilt in this, I set about the task. So like I say, it was quite big, bigger than my usual quilting. And the batting that I bought, I usually buy a 70 by 90, 100% cotton. And the one I bought for this was that size. So that was too small. So that gave me my first 
issue? Well, I've decided I'm going to tackle this in small stages. So stage one, I've had to piece the batting together because the batting I bought wasn't wide enough. So that's done now. And I've pressed the top. Well, I've got a lovely silver grey that I'm quilting it with. It matches the back perfectly. And the back is this beautiful, it's called duck egg. And I'll tell you all about that. So this is the backing. It's beautiful, it's called duck egg and it shimmers, there's a slight shimmer to it and I thought that would be perfect for the moonlight on the back of this quilt. It's uh, Egyptian cotton and I think it was 300 thread count. It's really nice, it's lovely and soft and I've been saving it for a project like this and just because it was a little bit small that wasn't going to deter me and so I pieced a section to go in the back to make it fit. So, and I utilized those blocks that were left over. So those half square triangles, I joined together to make a strip that goes down the back. And I think that looks lovely. So that was <laughs> the second problem I encountered. Well, I'm hoping today I'll see the finish of this quilt. This is the third day that I've spent quilting it. It's so heavy, I've only been able to work on it for short bursts at a time, but I'm on the last stretch now and the sun is shining. So hopefully I'll get this quilt finished today and I can show you. So I've quilted up to this line, to this three inch border line. And now I'm just going to put a line of stitching here just to make sure that all of those stitches will stay in place. I have backstitched a couple of times, they shouldn't come undone but this is just an extra measure. So when I make my quilts I'm always thinking of the life they'll have when they leave my sewing room so I'm thinking of them going in and out of washing machines and things like that and so I want to make them robust and so what I did on that seam I didn't put a silver seam on that line there to hold these in place. I changed it to a black. You can't see it, it's invisible. And the reason I did that was because I just don't think I would get the line straight enough. I think if it was starting to waver about, the weight of this quilt was pulling it from the needle and I think that would have looked untidy. So. If there's a few little crooked lines here in the black, you just can't see them. And you can see from that back shot and from this quilt that I've just used a cross hatch. And the reason I use this, I tend to use this quite a lot, is because I don't like to make grids or to mark out quilting lines. And what I do is just find the three inch squares and then I go from corner to corner. So the top of this quilt is made up of three inch squares or shapes that fit into a three inch box and, and then I can just quilt on the diagonal without measuring out, without chalk lines and all of that palaver. So I did manage to quilt it and bind it and I've got to say it wasn't as bad as I thought. I took my time. I did feel it across my shoulders and the top of my arms but nothing too bad. Um, I think if I was going to make a large quilt again it would be for a special occasion. Not this size, that's just a little bit too much for me but I'm really pleased that I did manage to get this finished and if I could have made it even bigger and added extra blue I think that would have looked beautiful but I think it looks beautiful now anyway and I am pleased like I say with the finish of it. And that's the pieced back. I'm trying to get an angle where you can see how it shimmers and that's it finished. It's an overcast day here today in the middle of England and the colours under this light really glow. Let's have a close-up. And I 
I've laid it on the bed, ready to take some photographs so that I could put it in my Etsy shop to find a new home for it. So I just laid it on the bed and I was just ready to start dressing the room, making it look attractive for some shops on my Etsy shop. Uh, and that's when my husband walked in. My husband has insisted that this is the home for it. He wants to keep it for us and he would like me to make a couple of pillar shams to match. So that's what I'm going to do today. And here we are with the design for the pillow shams. And so those are the details. And I'll put these, as usual, on my community page. So that's the centre of the design. And as you can see, I carry out the yellow and green half square triangles into this lovely blue. And then I will sew these all together. And around that, I will put a three inch border. And that's it with the two pillow shams complete. I think it sets the quilt off. I'll try and take a photo later in the dark and we'll have a look and see the difference between daylight and this half light. Unfortunately I haven't been able to take a photograph in the dark or the half light. I'm back to my old camera. Last week I took the video on my new camera which my son gave me. Well he upgraded so he gave me his old fancy camera but it's too fancy for my basic computer. It took me 10 minutes just to upload one image or one little bit of video footage so that's not viable. So I'm taking photos back on my lovely little old reliable basic phone camera and it's the best I can do I'm really sorry I can tell you it shimmers in the moonlight it does look lovely if you look back at the earlier image I think it was week two you'll see there how the colours do shimmer in the moonlight so that's it for this week. If you are still with me, I'd like to thank you very much for your company. Please take really good care of yourselves. And next week is month review already. So I'll have a look through that. Not too great. <laughs> I'll explain why. And what else? Oh yeah, I will show you improv quilting. That's what I'm going to do in a minute. Um, and why I have to control the improv, improvisation, and why I can't do improvisation. And if you've been quilting for a while, you might feel the same. But anyway, that's for next week. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.